Craig. It's Craig once again from Fix It Fellows, and as you can see, I'm in the kitchen today. Now, this kitchen was installed approximately 10 years ago, and the most important thing in this kitchen, as far as I'm concerned, is the dishwasher. It's used a lot. Just recently, I'm noticing that whilst it's working, it isn't getting hot. Um, now, this, this is a bit of an issue because if it's not getting hot, that means it's not cleaning quite as well as it should do, and also it doesn't dry quite as well as it should do. Now, this is what they call an integrated uh, dishwasher, so it has a cabinet door attached to the front of it, but in every other aspect, it's the same as any other dishwasher. Um, it's a Zanussi model, a, a ZDT41. So, I'm thinking about reasons why it wouldn't work, um, and that gets me thinking. So, everything about this machine is okay, apart from the fact it doesn't heat. Now, that leads me to think that if there was a major issue on the control board, like a problem with the IC and the programming of it had gone cranky or the chip had failed, then none of it would work. Also, um, the machine works in terms of it knows it's got water going into it because these machines have like a pressure or a float switch, I think they're situated down the side there. So the onboard uh, computer chip has to know that the water's flowing through the machine before it will start working. It's just one of those check parameters and that's good. The pump's working, that's all good. And it will go through the various different programs as expected, you know, the different timings, etc. All it's not doing is heating. Now, as far as I'm aware, the heating units in these are like a cylindrical uh, metal tube. Uh, must have some sort of element wrapped around inside that tube. The water flows through, powers, power is supplied to the heating element and it heats the water up. Um, now in my mind, the heating of the water is the last thing that the machine decides to do. All the other parameters need to be met. It will, is water present? Can I pump the water? Yes. If at the end of it, it can heat it, then all well and good, but it's not a critical element. Um, so my understanding is that on the main uh, board of the, the control module, um, which would operate at, you know, whatever voltage electronics operate at, 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, I'm not sure, but it certainly wouldn't operate at 240 volts, there must be a mechanism on that board that switches on the 240 volts that goes to the heater. The heater will need 240 volts, it's just like the heated element in a, in a cooker, for example. So that makes me think it's probably a relay. So something on the control board activates the relay at a lower voltage that opens and shuts the switch for the 240 volts to go to the heater. So that's going to be my first port of call, is I'm going to open up this machine, take out the control board, which is situated about here, and have a look at the relay. Is the relay working? Is the supplier to the relay good? Um, and we'll take it from there. Obviously, before you do any of this work, you need to switch the power off to the machine. Right then, so we're at the dishwasher. As I say, this is an integrated one, so it has got a cabinet door attached to the front. You see, so there's the cabinet door. This is actually the, the dishwasher. Now, I want to try and get into this um, circuit board, control board inside here. So to do that, I'm going to have to remove the carcass uh, door panel from there. So that's uh, four screws here and here. So let's get on with removing those. And then finally the last screw, you just want to try and support the door underneath rather than let it fall away. So if memory serves me, there is like a hook mechanism on the back so you just kind of lift the core away. Yeah, like so. Okay, yeah, so there was um, a screw here and here that acts like a keyhole, keyhole fitment. Yeah, the keyholes are in there. Okay, there we are, now we can see the machine like so and we need to get into this panel here 
So it looks like we need to underdo one, two, three, four, five, six screws. So I'll do that. So now with those screws out, this panel should just come away. Okay, so I've got it to here. I've had to undo some screws along here and here just to give this panel a little bit more space. One thing I would say is that this edge along here is extremely sharp. Um, yeah, needless to say, I've already cut myself a little bit. Um, but what seems to be happening is, is that in there, if you can see, you've got cables going up to the uh, control panel and they are currently just stuck to a black tacky strip that's on the back of here. So they're just currently stuck, which is stopping me from being able to lift out this top unit. So I'm just gonna have to reach in there and gently pry away the wires from the black tacky pad. So just bear with me. So here we are looking through the gap on the side of the machine and I'm just using a, a long screwdriver just to reach through there and now you can see I've now just detached those wires from that black tacky back pad. So I should now be able to remove that panel. Okay, so you should get to this point where you've got the white panel just hanging down ever so slightly. This is the control board. So you have your main power switch here and your control button there. Now this unit, it's secured behind two tabs. There's a tab this side and a tab this side. Now what it actually does, it wants to slide that way and then lift out. But in order to do that, you just have to pull this little tab sideways so it clears that little notch there, and then the unit can slide out. Then conversely, when it comes back in, you place the unit further back, drop it down low, and then slide the unit forward, if that makes any sense. So if I just get a little implement there just to prise that tab out, like so, I should then be able to, if I can just position, so I've, let me just get the camera better position for you. So I'm prising that tab out to the side and then the whole unit can push Out like so so that's that side free see it's come through there and then on that side there we go just come away so now that unit can just dangle it's secured by a couple of tie straps here and here um, obviously you don't want to make sure you don't stress out this wire too much you've got your power button there and the black program button there but now you've got your control module kind of loose so we can now look to detach the uh, power leads at the back there and take it out. Now what you want to do is you want to label up your plugs uh, or take a photograph of them and have a good memory of where each plug goes. Now, So it would seem that each of these plugs are kind of held in place by little tabs. Can you see that little tab there at the very bottom of the moulding? Um, so rather than try and uh, manipulate that plug out, what I'm actually going to do is open up this case. And then when I open up this case, it will allow us then to remove them plugs easier. Now the case is actually hinged. So looking at it like that, it's hinged along the right hand side. And on this side, it has one two tabs so opening those tabs will allow you to hinge that apart. I've just taken off the sort of rubber 
cover that goes over the buttons there. And you see they just had little retaining tabs. So that's that down there. That will now allow me to hinge that open. And there we go, there's the first tab, and then the second tab, and the whole thing opens up. Like so. Okay, so now you can see the board nicely. As I suspected, there is a big relay. Now that is the fella there that decides or switches um, the power to the heater module. So this whole board will probably operate on, I don't know, five volts or something. Um, five volts will get passed to here. It will activate a switch to open or close and that will open or shut the 240 supply to the heater. So I suspect that something here is going wrong. Um, so we'll just have a look at the various different traces that feed to that relay. I can't see any obvious signs of any components or anything burnt, being burnt from this side of the board. Um, here is a buzzer, probably a pizza electric buzzer. That gives you the sounds of the various different stages of programs that your machine's running at. Um, this here is the back of the button board and the, the re ribbon cable that attaches this to that. You've got some big old capacitors there. Be careful with those because they hold a charge. You don't want to be taking a wallop off of one of those. Um, now it's just a question of seeing if I can get this board out. The board is in uh, like little slide-in tabs here and here, so it needs to be lifted from this end. But at this end, the plugs are keeping it in place. So it's a case of how do I get those out. Let's give that a go. So this is the main power plug here. See, it's got the heaviest wires. So this is the power coming in. That just comes off like that. Okay, so we've got the actual thing removed from the machine. We should just be able to prise this out. Okay, so there's tabs at the side here and here. There's one out. There's the other. And then as you see, the whole thing lifts away. So this is the first time we get to see the back of the board. Uh, the back of the board doesn't have any components on it, but it has most of the track traces on there. So it's just a look to see whether there's any significant signs of burning. Look at all the major soldering points to make sure that they're all good. Um, that one there looks like these and these. I'll just give them a closer inspection, I suspect. I suspect they go onto the back of the relay. Do they go onto the back of the relay? Yes, they do. So we'll check those. Um, initial fault is the bolt looks okay. So switching back to the other side. Um, as I say, the relay is my really first point of contact of you know areas of interest. So, trying to look at the traces that go to it. Okay, so there's a trace that comes in here and goes to one of the pins. Um, these surface mounted capacitors look like they form something or another that go to the various pins on that. And then there are some traces coming in here. And then it looks like um, looks like a diode there that bridges across 
a couple of the tracks. Um, let's have a look at that. Okay, right, so on the back of the board, this is the back of the relay here. These are the various pins. And then, yeah, that relay is linked to the 240 volt, the big, the big plug there. So, yeah, does that, is that what goes to the, is that what goes to the heating element? Possibly. Okay. So that's the plug there. Mm. Okay. Right, so we'll have a look at this 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 here, this diode. Now there is there any other on the board. Okay, there's another diode down there. It's from my understanding, I'm not that great on electronics, but my understanding is a a diode is effectively like a one-way valve. So it lets power flow through it in one direction. But it won't let anything come back the other way so as to protect whatever's behind it from any sort of like current or charge coming back through. Um, now with relays, these operate like with like electromagnetic coils in there. So maybe that diode there is to protect some other circuitry here from any sort of back current from that coil passing back. So it'll be interesting, I might put my machine, my uh, my meter across there, and see how that diode is behaving. Let's have a look. So I've just got my multimeter here set to um, continuity. So if you touch touch these together, that tells you that there's continuity. Um, so let's have a put that across this diode. Okay, so it will let something through. It's letting a, a small current through that way. And it shouldn't allow anything at all through in the opposite way. And it is. Okay. Now, does that mean that's not working? Let's try the other diode. Can I get to that? So that's letting some current through that way. Okay, so that's letting, okay, so that's got a rating of that amount that way, 1600 and something. But back the other way, it's six, 600. So there's a significant difference in the amount of juice it lets through on that diode. Whereas on this diode, it's saying four, five, seven that way. And four, and almost the same number that way. Now, as I say, I'm not an expert on these things, but that would suggest to me that that diode there is misbehaving. Now, if it's not letting any juice through, to this relay, like the board is deciding that the heater should be on, but the signal can't get through this diode to this relay for this relay to allow the big juice to go to the heater. And if that's the case, well, that, that could be it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up this diode or get a, a, and just replace it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? The machine isn't really working properly anyway, so. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, so from eBay, I have ordered 
Some of these, these are 194148 diodes, they're kind of general purpose um, diodes, and they cost me the grand total of £1.30. Now it's £1.30 for 10, so we're talking 13 pence each. And this is them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my multimeter, as you saw earlier in the video, across one of these and see how these behave. Okay, so here we are with the one of the new diodes. I'm going to put my meter across it. It's on continuity again. And there you go. There's no current flowing through in that direction. But if I spin it around, we we have current flow through. So it's behaving very differently to the diode that's on the board. Um, it could be that the diode on the board behaves differently because it's part of a bigger circuit. Well, I don't know. But I'm going to swap them out and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like on this diode it has a black ring as I'm looking at it on the very left hand side That must signify the direction of flow So I shall ensure that I put the new diode in place with the same positioning Okay, so there is the old diode out. Okay, so this is the back of the ball. This is the area of the relay. Um, this pin here and this pin here is where the 12 volts gets applied in order to activate the relay. Now, this relay is normally open, so no current can flow. Now, what the relay does, it wants to bridge this pin here, which is supplying 240 volts, to this pin over here to then send it off to the heater. So this trace element here is the big 240 volt plug. So I put my uh, test on that one. So the power would come in here, flow up to this point, but normally the relay is open. So this trace line here that goes to the pin that supplies the power out to the heater, there's no continuity there. Okay, now if I was to put 12 volts across here and here, it would cause an electric or magnetic coil to engage and cause effectively a connection to go from here to there. Let me demonstrate. So this is 12 volts. I apply it on there and there, and there we go. We get continuity and you hear the relay clicking. Now if I was to do that in the wrong direction um, with this diode in place, it might have blown this diode, but the diode's out, so that's not so much of a problem. I guess the only fear is if I've sent current back and it's blown the IC, <laughs> um, yeah, that's always a risk, I guess. So I know the relay's working. If the relay gets 12 volts, it will operate. So, was there anything wrong with this board? I don't really know. I shall put this new diode back in. It could well be the heating element. Um, but we'll find out. Okay, so there's the diode back on the board. So there we go, there's all the connections back in, and now it's a case of laying the control box inside the housing there, sliding it forward and clicking it into place like that. And now uh, you can all just get it back together. OK, 
Okay, so I've set the machine off, as you can hear, and it's just a question of waiting to see whether it heats up or not. Um, time will tell, I'll come back to it in a little bit. Okay, so here we are back at the dishwasher. It's been running for about 45 minutes now, and I am pleased to report that is very definitely some heat there. Um, I've taken the kickboard away and if you look under here there's sort of exposed metal for the machine and if I feel up there yeah there is very definitely heat there I mean that is that is very very warm now I'm convinced the machine was not doing that before I change that diode. So, um, as far as I, I can tell, it's, it's fixed. Uh, we'll wait until the very end of the cycle and see whether, you know, the stuff actually comes out dry. Okay, so the machine is just at another stage of its cycle. It's pumping, it's definitely pumping water out of the machine. So this is the waste pipe that comes from the machine, goes into the waste pipe here. And that is hot. That is definitely hot. So the only way that can be hot is if the heating element is now operational because this machine is only fed with cold water. It looks promising. Okay, so the machine is now effectively stopped. It's at the end of its cycle. Um, I'm going to open the door and we should get a bit of heat and steam coming out of here. Yeah, that is warm and everything in there is hot. We'll keep that shut and that, that should dry off nicely. Okay, so let's open up the dishwasher. Yeah, there's still some latent heat in there. And yeah, everything is dry. Everything is warm and dry. So there you go, the, the dishwasher is now working, the heat is good. Um, everything is drying, so changing that diode on that circuit board seems to have quite a, quite a good effect. So for the sake of 13 pence, okay, I had to buy 10 of them in the pack, £1.30, but arguably 13 pence and that dishwasher is fixed. See how long it lasts. I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Please check out some of my other videos and like and subscribe. Cheers. Bye-bye.